Okay, in this next example, we're going to use StatCrunch to construct a conditional distribution and to draw a bar graph of the conditional distribution. So we're going to use the information that we had from the previous example. So we're going to enter this information into StatCrunch. Okay, so here we have our column that represents the employment status, but these are the rows because it's the employed row, the unemployed row, and the not in labor force row. And then here are the four columns. Do not, did not finish high school, high school graduate, some college, and bachelor's degree. So we put in the data here. If we want to create a conditional distribution, we're going to go to stat and then select tables and then go to contingency. Now we put in a uh, contingency table that has a summary. This is with a summary. So we're going to select with summary. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to select the four columns. So now employment status represents the row. So we're not going to choose that. We're going to start with the first column, which is did not finish high school. And then also the high school graduate, some college, and then a bachelor's degree or higher. And then the row label is going to be the employment status. So we're going to go ahead and select the employment status. Okay. And now what we want is we want the column percent. And then we're going to go ahead and then select compute. And so therefore, we're going to go ahead and then just copy from here to here. We can copy the total, but I'm just going to go ahead and copy this part so it matches what we did in our previous example. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Okay, and so we're going to compare it to the example that we did earlier, which is creating a conditional distribution. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to delete that. And then underneath this was the example that we completed earlier. And I want you to see what we did here. Okay, here we end up having 0 0.423, which is the same thing as 42.3%. 0 0.549, which is 54.9%, 0 0.633, which is 63.3%, and then 70.721, which is 72.1%. So you can see here that this matches our conditional distribution that we end up putting together in our previous example. Okay, and then we can also notice that the total represents 1, or in this case, this is 100 percent okay so there is our conditional distribution okay now what we want to do is we want to create a bar graph of this information okay now when drawing conditional bar graphs you want to label the values of the explanatory variable on the horizontal axis and use different colored bars for each value of the response variable so we draw three bars side by side for each employment status we're going to let the horizontal axis represent the level of education and the vertical axis represent the relative frequency of the response variable. So we're going to come in here, okay, and what I've done is we now have to generate new information. So we got to put this information in ourselves. So what we're doing here is now we can see that this column right here is going to represent the uh, level of education. So we have our level of education okay and so this is going to represent our row and then we have the employed unemployed not in labor force so what I've done is when we created our conditional distribution okay so let's take a look at that here here is our conditional distribution so from here okay now these become the rows and these employed unemployed and not in labor force is going to be the columns in order for us to make the bar graph. So coming in here, we have our switch this around to where now this becomes the rows and then our unemployed, employed, unemployed and not in labor force. And then we put in our values that we received here. Okay. Now, if we want to create a bar graph from here, we're going to go to graph, but now we're going to select chart. And then this chart, we're going to go to columns. So from here, what we're going to do is the columns that we want to represent are the employed, unemployed, and not in labor force. So we have employed, unemployed, and not in labor force. And now where is the row labels? Well, the row labels is the level of education. So we have level of education. Okay. We have our worksheet. We do not want horizontal bars. What we want is vertical bars that are split. Okay. And then the color is automatically going to do that. So again, our x-axis label is level of education. 
okay and our y-axis is going to be the relative frequency because that's what we put in there so therefore we have the level of education relative frequency and now we're going to go ahead and select compute okay so here is our bar graph and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy this so then we can write out and describe what's going on with our graph okay so here is our bar graph okay and again as I stated before here um, you can see that here's our bar graph the blue represents the employed the red represents the unemployed and the green represents not in the labor force so I want you to take a look at the bar graph that represents the employed if you take a look at each bar graph as you can see here this has a trajectory of an increasing situation so that means as the level of education and again down here this is the level of education okay it increases so we can see here it increases from each level of education and then if we take a look at not in the labor force and that's the bar graph that's in green we can see that it is decreasing okay so it is clear that as the level of education here in the blue graph increases then we can say that the proportion employed also increases as the level of education increases the proportion not in the labor force decreases so that means that this ends up decreasing now instead of drawing a conditional bar graph we can draw stacked or segmented bar graphs and these graphs there is one bar for each value of the explanatory variable each bar is then divided into segments such that the height of each segment represents the proportion of observations corresponding to the response variable now the height of the blue portion in each segment is the proportion unemployed for each level of education the height of the red portion in each segment is the proportion unemployed for each level of education and the height of the green bar is the proportion not in the labor force for each level of education so again we can see as level of education increases the proportion employed increases while the proportion not in the labor force decreases okay last now association between two qualitative variables versus association between two quantitative variables the methods presented for identifying the association between two categorical categorical variables are different from the methods used for measuring association between two quantitative variables the measure of association is based on whether there are differences in the relative frequencies of the response variable employment status for the difference or the different categories of the explanatory variable which is the level of education if differences exist we might attribute these differences to the explanatory variable in addition because the data in this table are observational we do not make any statements regarding causation the level of education is not said to be a cause of employment status because a controlled experiment was not conducted 